good evening, Sammy. Hello, Trip. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing very good, and can I just say thank you for putting out your work and assisting other people in a selfless way. And I've done a session, I spoke to you quite a long time ago when you and Rob were like in the beginning stages of really like out to the public, if that makes sense. Yes! Um, how are you today? I am doing very well, and thank you for your connection again. Um, it is also my greatest pleasure to connect to all human entities, all the entities who have the interest in reflecting themselves back into my own energy as part of a co-creation. This is very exciting. It is an expression of love that I have for myself as a part of the collective consciousness, as well as my understanding of connecting with all that is. Wow, well, thank you very much. Yes! It's just amazing that, like, I'm here within the United Kingdom, Borough of London, and I'm interacting with you when you are light years away in Star System Capella. It's just, it's quite amazing. Yes! It is very uh, great. Uh, many humans do not understand their own capabilities in doing this type of connection, but I wish to ensure you that even when you are sitting there and you are looking at a star that is a thousand light years away, the feeling of love and resonance and connection to this entity, this entity that is known to be a star, an entity that is a collective consciousness of the entire solar system that it resides in, manifested outward, physically as a star, is very understanding of your connection. It hears your love, it feels your love, it connects to your love. And individually, it sends back a radiance of love to you in the form of light. Wow, so that's a fantastic explanation. Thank you. Yes! And it is a very fascinating concept. Yeah, it's very fascinating. Um, could I start my first question, please? If I yes, start whenever you are ready to begin, you may do so. Thank you. Um, these first two questions that I asked is regarding some of my friends. Um, the, f the first question was, um, my friend had, one of my friends has recently had a dream where she was warned about the owl. She also had a dream regarding being in a red room. The strange thing is that these two dreams, these two dream experiences relate to a film and TV series known as Twin Peaks, in which a man is also warned about the owl and has a scene in a red room. She fa she only found out after after both of the dreams happened about this movie and TV series. Therefore, she had the movie or TV series could not have influenced her in the way of experiencing these dreams. Um, what does the owl have anything to do with abduction? Is it an entity, a false memory, implantation? And could you please explain this, please? Thank you. Yes! I am not able to look into your friend's energy without the permission of this entity specifically, but I will express, as the energy is touching yours, as you are also having experiences of synchronicity and resonance with this idea, I will express to you that in the idea, in the connection to the dream state, Often, interactions with all entities are manifested into something more simplistic and more symbolistic of something that connects to humanity or the Earth collective consciousness. The idea that a show that has never been seen by this entity is introduced as a specific cinematary idea within the dream state is very easy to explain. This consciousness is portion of the collective consciousness. Just as if you are listening to the Beatles, just as if you are listening to the band that is known to be Wing, hearing a song that becomes resonant with you, you are placing this love of this one song from this entity that is the Beatles or the Wing and pushing this love back out into the um, what you would say to be ley lines, or what you would call perhaps the electromagnetic grid, and this redistributes itself. It distributes itself approximately one six billionth into each entity. So each entity who has never had the exposure to the beetle entities or the wean entities is very easily able to access this information. This information 
is literally able to be pulled out of this grid at any moment for any entity to experience. This is what these psychic entities are doing when they have never met an entity, but they are able to experience what the physical death was, what the interaction was of the death entity with the entity who perhaps murdered them or assisted them in their translation from physical life to death, and also is able to experience all things that happened before this. It is not that they are psychically able to just understand from the energy that is there specifically. It is literally them taking their own computer um, signal, which is the electromagnetic energy, and inputting it into their own consciousness. This consciousness is considered to be a processor. It is able to take in the information, and depending on the human perception, depending on the human beliefs, depending on the human overall exchange of energy with themselves to the grid, in the way that it aligns within their chakra systems, as well as the blockages or lack of blockages within, will uh, distribute and determine the clarity of this message. Wow, thank you for your very diverse and in-depth explanation. Very good, thank you. Yes! You are very welcome. <clears throat> thank you. And the second question for my other friend, he said, quite a good question, I think. He said, is it hard to have respect for humans when they generalize anything reptilian as being evil? And this is not hard at all to accept this. It is an understanding of exposure, belief systems, but more so the way that the brain and the mindset is trained for all humanity. All humanity is taught from very small periods, at the ages of very young, to not trust what is within their heart, as you see children being loving to others, even if they are of a different color, even if they are of a different religion, it is very easy for children to accept each other. But as they begin to grow older, into the ages of 5 to 10, they begin to um, not only take the belief systems of the ones who are older around them, but also being able to directly take vibration on amongst all the older entities around them. So as they begin to get a message, they begin to pick upon one another for various things that the adults around them pick on other humans or have judgments upon other humans for, and then they begin to grow. And this begins to get worse throughout all stages, teenager, um, on up to the young adult, into the great adult. And all of these things are vibrationally learned, are mechanically learned, are perhaps instinctively picked up amongst others' actions, from perceptions alone. So as all of these perceptions become stacked, all of the things that humanity in the collective consciousness has heard of the reptilian entities due to its interaction with the ancient reptilians as well as the earth reptilians, all of these things give a bad taste upon the mouth. So it is very easy to respect and to understand and to love this portion of humanity that cannot accept entities as myself that are reptilian in nature due to the processing and molding of the mindset. But let us not forget <clears throat> that even humanity in this stage of their evolution, in this stage of their existence, um, only can be perceived by us for we need this experience as well. So it is very um, comforting to know that humans hate reptilian entities because we understand that it's a reflection that we are giving back to ourselves. Wow, thank you. And I really, I really liked your earlier description of from the ages of zero to five, five to ten, teenager onwards, how belief systems start to evolve and grow. Yeah, that's yes. Right. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. As well. Um, the third question is like kind of personal problem. I don't know if I remember, but did I remember maybe in our first session or maybe you have knowledge from the host that I thought I had a mental disorder known as OCD? Yes, I am able to receive this information from the host. Um, to my knowledge, I, to, that, to that time really, I thought it was OCD, but I've had some experiences and I think it's more likely to be either an entity like attached to me, which I've only begun to really realize if it is or a kind of thought form, but 
what what this I'll just refer to it as a thing because I don't know what this is right now, but it's kind <clears> of like it, it's very it tries to disempower me. Like when I'm if I'm training, if I'm doing anything, if I'm doing anything productive and which I love and I have a passion for, it, it will try to tell me you can't do this, you will lose if you do this, you're not good enough. Even at, and it will contradict itself in so many situations just so it can like try to disempower me, maybe feel like I can't do this or like if I'm around someone I very respect or love, I like it will try to put it, this thing will like put thoughts into my head saying, oh I don't like you, and it will attempt to make me like feel guilty and like some guilt trip or something like this. And generally it's just out for all the negative. So, but one of the experiences I had was I don't do it anymore. I've, I've stopped some of the habits. I've stopped so that's some some good things um like i was i was taking photos once and i actually noticed that in one of the pictures my eyes had slits i wasn't i wasn't really shocked at this it was i don't know what i was thinking i should have i should have shocked myself and researched and changed immediately so i thought this was a kind of if this is a kind of reptilian possession of some kind or i had someone recently but i don't really I don't really resonate with this. I don't really believe this person. They said that it's a thought form, and the thought form um, wants to believe that you are taken over, and so so that um, it makes you see the slits in the eyes. But I'm definite that they were real slits. And I was wondering if you could look into my energy and see if there's anything, any other entity, anything that is not of mine within me. Yes. Or, um, if you are giving the permission for me to connect you more deeply, um, to look into this idea, um. With your permission, again, I will connect to you. I definitely give you permission, my friend. Yes! Um, if you are able to close the physical eyes, to relax the physical body, and now, through intent and thought process alone, push the energy from the very inside of your physical body to the outside, and continuously push further and further, and in one moment I will connect you. Okay, thank you. One moment, please. Okay. What I am able to perceive from this, the OCD idea is what is thought to be a specific disease, but within your own specific case, there is an idea that there is a sort of obsessive thought process that is vibrationally learned at a younger age, and as this accumulates, you begin to hear the idea of OCD. This is a, an attachment that forms onto you, and as you begin to grab onto this idea and believe this idea, it becomes more of your reality. And during these times when you are in deep, disconnected thoughts, when you are fully embraced into the ego, then an entity from within your oversoul is attaching to you. So this is true for both ways. It is a thought form that has um, created a snowball effect, and through the snowballing effect, another entity is connected to you. When you are looking at this specific entity, it is what you would say to be a low, fourth density, reptilian entity of a type 2 nature, one who is negative, who is uh, perhaps on the borderline of the definition of malevolence, and it truly is connecting to you for negative reasons. <clears throat> the good news within this concept is that if you begin to align yourself more deeply with your own self, your true nature, this will align you with the Obrasol, and when you are doing um, a complete alignment of oneself, if you are being the greatest you that you are able to be in the moment of every day, then you are truly connected to the higher self. When you connect to this higher self or oversoul, it is much more potent than any density entity. It is much more potent than I am. It is much more potent than even a sixth entity, ancient reptilian. So no matter what demonic force, no matter what um, reptilian force, 
no matter what these higher density entities or what you perceive or what your name that you give them or what you believe them to be, none of them can connect you if you are truly aligned with the higher self. But being aligned to the higher self, you must understand that you are. You must also remove the belief that these entities may affect you in any way. And you must also remind yourself of the divinity within you. When you connect to the higher seven density entity, you are more close to the portion of creator consciousness or complete light or source energy, if you will, than any physical living entity. And these physical living entities look at love much as many humans look at poisonous gas. They will retreat from this, they will remove themselves from this energy, and they will not be present. So if you begin to come uh, up with these concepts, if it begins to roll downhill or to begin to spiral, be aware of catching yourself in that moment and express to yourself over and over, I am divinity, I am connected to the source energy, and when I am doing what I love the most, when I am being the most of who I am in each moment, nothing can connect to me or affect my thought process. Thank you. And will this remove the entity? Yes! You must Thank be very diligent with this, and your belief that this entity can attach to you must be a complete 100% belief that you can remove this entity. If you believe it is possible to remove this entity, this is not enough of your belief system to create your reality. Truly, each entity is able to create everything within their universe. Remind yourself while experiencing this entity that you have created a bridge for this entity to connect you, and that in the true nature of the way reality works, this negative entity that is attached to you is truly a portion of you. It is a portion of your own consciousness inside of you that is manifested to the physical reality. Hmm. I see, thank you. I mean, I've contemplated other ways to deal with it, but would this be, like, with, how can I really align with myself? Because, like, sometimes, <clears throat> like, it's quite a complicated philosophy of what really is yourself, like, your highest intentions. Is it just being you? It is being time. you to the highest degree in each moment. This means if you are living and something excites you and makes you very excited and happy, it does not matter what all entities around you perceive this to be. It does not matter if these entities are negative or positive in the way that they see what you are doing. If it excites you and if it feels good to you, if you are truly being who you are in that moment, then, and only then, will you be able to disconnect from this. Thank you. Thank you very much. And are there any other sort of exercises I can do to remove this entity from me? When you are looking upon this entity in your own mind, when you are uh, perhaps visualizing this entity, when you are closing the physical eyes, try to begin in a meditative state. And when you begin to visualize this entity, then you are able to ex experience the concept that this entity is you and using specific visualization uh, techniques such as looking at this entity and then begin to see that it is truly you, to see that the entity that is negative, that is attached, is only an extension of your own consciousness as all entities that you come into an agreement or relationship with is, then you'll be able to see the power over yourself that you have. Thank you, thank you. Yes! Um, also, um, I mean, I came across, like, I know it's unusual for me to have come across information at some such a young age, but like, I have very, very, like, intense and intense desires, and I have to do certain things, and I'm on my way to doing it. I'm definitely doing it, but there's, like, I've, I've come across, like, many, like, the first kind of extraterrestrial race that I rediscovered in this life was the reptilians, and there is there is some sort of connection. I don't know what it is, but more than any other ET race, like Pleiadians, Syrians, like the reptilians is what is deeply interesting for me. I feel that in some past life or another way, I have a very I have a connection with them, whether it be against them or maybe I had past lives. Like I I don't know. So. 
If you wish to experience the reptilian energy within you, remind yourself that your DNA is very strongly made of several reptilian entities, that many, um, two of the major entities that are connecting to you. If you look at the idea of seven entities that make the human DNA, or the twelve races within the seven entities that make the DNA, three of them are reptilian. There is the ancient reptilian entities. There are the ones that you would call Anunnaki, who are also hybrids of ancient reptilians, as well as another race who is a hybrid from ancient reptilians as well. So each one of these entities has placed their DNA into humanity to change them to who they are today. So know that there is three twelfths of you, approximately, if you will, looking at three into twelve as one quarter, of your DNA is reptilian in nature. This gives you the very first step to see why it resonates with you. But in your own Obersoul, in the way that fractals of Obersouls connect from one to the other, because of your interest in the reptilian nature, because the entity that connects to you, the type 2 negative entity that connects to you is also reptilian, and because of the severe connection in mind thought process that is related to reptilians within you, that many entities that connect you in a sleep state as well as the astral projected state are truly reptilian entities. So this is why you find great resonance and great interest with them, because literally most of the entities of your oversoul that connect you on a common basis are truly reptilian in nature, whether it is a hybrid nature whether it is a reptilian animal hybrid race such as myself, or whether it is the true ancient reptilians themselves. Thank you for that explanation. Yes! Um, could I ask what you meant by they connect to me in my oversoul? I mean, I understand this type 2 entity that is attached to me, but um, I can't really understand what you meant by they connect to me by my oversoul. Is this some sort of connection that I'm not aware of? Yes! Um, your physical mind, your conscious mind is not aware of this, but your heart is very aware of this. Your Obersoul is the sum of all fractals that make it combined in the ostracis, ostracis of your Obersoul, breaking down into separate branches, is truly a nature where many six-density entities are within your Obersoul, Many fifth-density entities are within your Obersoul, more fourth-density entities are in your Obersoul, and even more third-density entities are in the Obersoul, as well as the second and first entities. So literally, your Obersoul is a combination of many probable past existences, many probable future existences, many probable parallel existences, and all of these are in one Obersoul. You are truly a fractal of what the Obersoul is, with an approximation of one, uh, one thousand of the Obersoul, your consciousness level. Um, so in this approximation of the Obersoul, there is literally a several hundred other entities who are of a human level or higher. This means that there are literally several existences that go on throughout the Oversoul within your own self at different times and different matrices and different realities. And many of these entities are reptilian. Thank you very much. That's also um, a very hard concept to fathom. There are parallel realities and I take it parallel me's also. Yes! There are literally an infinite amounts of um, probabilities in which are parallel to yours as well. So there is literally the Sammies that are exactly the same as you, but they are using a different hand or having a slightly different name, all the way to ones who are living in America as a entity who is of Caucasian descent, who is the president of the country, and everything between. Thank you for that. Yes! The one thing, are all these Sammies, like, I believe that at the core of everyone, our personality, our personality is really us, like, I could be Sammy, the person, the person I truly am, 
there isn't going to be an, another Sammy that is opposite to my personality, e.g. like um, very destructive, extremely hateful, like things that are just, well, things that are just opposite to me in ways, like, because do all the parallel Sammies have to be my personality, like what, how I'm communicating to you now, if this makes sense. There are very many of these Sammies that are exactly as you are, exactly the same energy, but there are many who have chose to exist in a separate existence, one in which they are raised in a different way, where they are raised to have beliefs. All of them are literally the same as you, but many of them have different beliefs, different systems, and different values. In the end, all of them will learn a lesson that is separate, but all of them will feel much as you do. Thank you. Thank you. Yes! And thank you. Also, the, the kind of last question on this subject with this Type 2 entity. Do you think this would be the most wise way to deal with it, is to try, try and connect to my higher self being me? Because I feel I am being me, so I don't understand really. In the being you in the moment, it is when you begin to have these thoughts, when you begin to doubt yourself, find a way to place yourself in your highest excitement. Many times during the day, you are able to experience a level of excitement, a level of happiness, but in some times you are not able to experience this. It seems to be difficult, it seems to be uh, frustrating, and when these thoughts begin uh, to come over into the mindset, it begins to snowball. It begins to go downwards into a spiral. Before this spiral is caught, place yourself as you would in the rest of the day, happy and excited and connected to yourself. Being you is very great, but also being very aware of each individual thought, each individual portion of consciousness, and each individual way that you process and perceive the world can be very different from the true you. When you are feeling 100% resonance, this is the great joy and excitement that you often experience. But when a portion of your own consciousness does not resonate, then the questions begin in your mind. So when you are able to experience a resonance and a lack of resonance, try to be very aware of these points. And then when you begin to go down this path of non-resonance, connect yourself again and remove this area. Then you will be able to experience a more separate disconnection from this entity. Thank you for that. I noticed that this entity, whether because you said that the reason, like the bridge for this entity to connect to me was the obsessive thought patterns or constructs within me. Yes! Yes, for that, um, what was I going to say? I noticed that whether it's this obsessive thought, I think it's more the reptilian entity, it tries to turn everything into, I mean, it's just, it's quite trivial and silly, I mean, it tries to turn everything into a domination game, e.g. if, like, for example, if you're walking and someone else is walking, I mean, it will try to make you, like, it will suggest that you do not move so that other person has to completely move, so you're just dominating everything all the time in complete control and domination, that this is what it tries to achieve. Yes! And it does this because the entity is very separate. It does not understand that the entity in front of it, that it wishes to move and dominate, is truly a portion of itself. It does not have the understanding that you, as well as itself, as well as the entity, are all deeply and truly connected to themselves. As I am willing to help humanity to give information to help reflect that back to the entities who are around um, myself in the human experience, this idea is given as a portion of my love to myself in the understanding that helping the one next to me is truly reflecting help back to myself. In living in this excitement helps all entities. These entities do not have this um, understanding of true oneness with each other. Thank you. So, so sorry for the. Now this is really the last question of the subject because like it's a very it's a very another question. So like if I ever get, I mean there are parts that I'm a like say an extremely competitive person. Like I, I say I'm quite egotistical, but I try to get rid of it. Like I always want to win and win, and if I can win, win in the best way possible. I'm not necessarily dominating for the sake of dominating, but dominating because 
you be the best you can and you win and like you beat if, if you know what I mean but not in such the negative way so if I get any of these domination thoughts that are out of line like the real domination like the evil negative sense should I just ignore it and realign first and when you are aware of this thought when these thought patterns or energetic patterns come back to you and you begin to feel the need uh, to dominate or the thought process that tells you that you should dominate remind yourself it is not within your greatest excitement and then refocus your attention and energy into something that is in your highest excitement this is realigning truly with yourself thank you and if I do this, how long do you think it will take for this entity to release from me? Or would it just, like, I don't really understand the mechanics. Um, truly, it will be released as long as this idea of connecting to it no longer serves a, a purpose of your overall need to experience this. But truly, with your own capability and power, it could be as soon as two to three days but the probability of this would be approximately in one and three quarters of months if you are truly excited of this idea and if you truly um, incorporate it into all of your existence by this one and three quarter month it will be of a 82 percent or higher probability thank you for this yes thank you yes Thank you. And are there, are there any other, like, sort of exercise, like, while I'm doing this, or if I, when I manage to get rid of it, are there any kind of, like, exercises so that you can kind of put a shield around yourself so other entities cannot attach to you? Within your belief system, if you believe that this is very possible, if you believe that the energy of placing intent for no other entities to connect you, then truly this will be what you experience. So if you believe that this is possible, if you believe that the energetic shield, then making a process within your own mind, um, closing your physical eyes, building this shield around you, this can truly be useful to you. Thank you. I mean, I just, I realized again that, like, I watched, like, when I was kind of younger, like, more younger, I watched a video, like, where someone had experienced an extraterrestrial, and it's kind of weird, like, I'd always wish to have contact if you're not like I, I think I always wish it and there was stuff when I was really young as well like I will just I don't know why I mean it's kind of silly I would just sit down I don't know why and I I pray for something bad to happen to me I don't know why I would just do it and like and I prayed for later on that's just something else I prayed to have contact and maybe this was the contact that this is the negative contact that came yes this subconscious sphere that many humans have to connect to entities is also an ingrained and handed down fear for many generations. It is almost a fear within the DNA due to the acceptance of fear of entities connecting to you as a collective for many generations. Mm, I see, thank you. Yes! And um, next question please. Uh, could you tell us um, like the percentage of positive reptilians and draconians throughout the universe like how many are there now i think the number was 10 percent has there been any change or like what's it like in this galactic area i am not able to speak for the entire universe as a collective consciousness as our level of consciousness the um what you would say to be type one entity from the fifth density is able to experience mostly their own galactic a community as there is no need to go outside of the galactic consciousness as there is enough to experience within our lifespan just in the galaxy alone this percentage is grown since the last time that I have expressed that it was approximately 10 percent this idea was um, a little off in the mathematical way due to the host ability to connect to the true concepts of the information so when I am delivering information through him now opposed to the time that was over two years and your time ago this time it was much more difficult to express specific ideas at that time it was approximately 8.5 percent now there is a 12.8 percent 
This yeah. differentiality is caused by the acceptance of not only humans, but other third density races around the galaxy. Oh wow, that's that's very good then I suppose. That's quite that's quite a big increase. Yes! A very large increase as well. Many of the negative entities that were of a reptilian nature, that were type 2 entities, but they are still loving and non-benevolent, closer to a benevolent style, were easily able to uh, cross this pattern, to cross from a type 2 to type 1. Oh, thank you for that. That's interesting. Yes, and thank you for this idea as well. <laughs> thank you. And um, for the next question, because what are the if you if you could speak, maybe speak on their behalf because you are what, like one of these individuals like the positive reptilians and positive draconians throughout the universe or this this part of the universe what are their what are their thoughts and like what do they want to do or if they do you know, what are their thoughts on what the negative what the remainder negative part of their race are doing in their ideas and their philosophy like I suppose it's domination and taking over and just using humans just for their own needs, like, what are their thoughts on this? Are you uh, asking what the Type 1 entities' thoughts of the Type 2 are, or vice versa? Um, the Type 1, like, the more positive entities towards the Type 2, what are their thoughts on them? Um, the Type 1 entity sees that the only reason that there is a Type 2 is because the collective consciousness allows this, all of the entities connected, into the galaxy are manifesting this as a portion of their own reality, so there is no judgment upon them. We are accepting of the ancient reptilians because we understand that they are a part of us. But if you are looking at the type 2 who are more loving, who are more um, closer to the benevolent idea, but still, because they are willing to encroach on the free will of other entities, they are considered a class 2 entity, or a type 2 entity, these entities are very hurt by this. They are very upset by these entities. <laughs> they see that domination is not helpful, that domination and not love is what very uh, deeply depresses many races, that disconnects many races, and that causes physical wars, and this is not very exciting for them. Oh, thank <clears throat> you for the explanation. Yeah. Yes! Thank you. And regarding the draconians, because I take I take quite a deep interest in this. Maybe you explained before about that over something like this. But um, is whether alpha draconians, I don't know if they did originate from here or alpha draconians or Thuban, this alternative name. Um, are there still draconians and beings that reside there? I don't really know. Um, reside in what area? Um. On the planet Alpha Draconis. <laughs> Sorry, I'm oh, not too knowledgeable. Yes! Yeah. The idea of Alpha Draconis, there is a constellation within your own skies that is called Draconis or Draconia. Yeah. And the Alpha star is the most brightest star. This star is where the planet that the Alpha Draconian entities live upon. They are still there. They are in many areas of star systems. <laughs> There are ones that are connected to Rigel. There are ones that are connected to many different stars throughout the galaxy. The origin of these entities is not this matrices. There is a separate matrix within this universe. One of the 12 matrices, the most basic matrix, the one that has least evolution within it, the one that is more negative than positive, the one that is the positive entities are a very small minority. This area has the same star that is manifested through all 12 matrices known as the Alpha Draco star. And this planet is where these entities come from. This is why traveling through the matrix, it is so comfortable for them to come here. But in the truth of nature, the Alpha Draconi star from the uh, very first matrices within this universe that they are coming from, we are not able to prove that this is where they originate from, as they are truly the oldest entities in the galaxy. There is no history from any of the races that we connect to that goes beyond the Alpha Draconian race. Wow, that's interesting. Thank you for that. Let us express, perhaps, a explanation of why they are the oldest. Yes. 
The Alpha Draconian are of a Type 2 nature, they are of a malevolent style, and when you are a Type 2 entity, there is a want to remain in physical existence. In their existence, they are of the six density entities. This is the highest level of physical reality. If they were to graduate from physical reality out of the six density, what would happen is they would come back into oneness. They would come back into the seven density oversouls. They understand that the oversoul is neutral in nature, that it is made evenly of positive and negative energy, and do not wish to experience positivity at all. The positivity within the Oversoul is enough to literally, in their own belief, destroy what they are. This is not true in the nature of how the Oversoul works, as we have all revisited the Oversoul at many portions. It truly adds more onto what you are, but they do not wish to give up the style of living, the belief systems, the empire as they would see this. They do not wish to give these things up. And if they are going out of physical existence, no longer would they need a physical body. They do not wish to change this. So they have existed and reproduced and set themselves within many cycles that refurbish them. Many of this connection to refurbing, refurbishing their own race is connecting to other entities. It is dominating them and using their energy for their existence. It is helping them thrive um, for what seems to be an eternity to most humans in a physical existence that is not meant to hold physical entities this long. So when they have run out of their collective energy, when it is time for their race to reincarnate into a seventh density over a soul, then to start a new cycle of incarnation, then they begin to dominate other races. Then they use their collective consciousness energy to refurbish and re um, vigor their own race and continue onward. This is why they are dominating entities. They are literally taking energy from each race to make sure and assure themselves they do not have to leave physical reality. Thank you for that. Yeah. Yes! You are very welcome for this. Huh. Thank you. And one other thing that really interests me, like you mentioned Empire. What is the, for the malevolent part of the draconians what is their empire do they have like a high a hierarchy or um a high a hierarchy system for which they delegate roles to certain individuals and how the how their so-called empire works is there this yes there is a great amount of information upon this but in the time that we have left to connect to each other approximately 10 minutes left there is not nearly enough time to express the detail but let us express it in a most simple way there is a very high hierarchical system one entity would be the overall ruler of the race then under him there are several hundred second tier and then they begin to have a third tier and fourth tier and then past the sixth tier that they have, they begin to hybrid themselves with other races. Then they begin to have a complete other system of hierarchy in each hybrid race. It is separate, but um, takes the orders from the original race. Oh, I see. Yeah, <laughs> I would imagine it to be like this. It's even, it's even like, even the hybrids have hierarchies. That's... Um, some of these entities do, but some they are not able to dominate. Some become positive entities. Some become um, malevolent, but are able to escape the grip of the power of these entities as well. So they begin to have wars against each other. Oh, thank you for that. Yes! And, uh, um, is there, I understand, like, um, Buddhism one of the so-called religions, I don't, I don't really, I mean, there are many sects and types of Buddhism, but I don't really see it as a religion. I more see it as a philosophy that one lives by. And like, some have the eightfold path, some have um, eight things, letting go of competing, letting go of judging. Is, is there any of the positive reptilians or positive draconians, do any of them have like a spiritual code or path that they kind of live by and apply to their life? 
If you are looking at the idea of belief systems, all physical entities have belief systems. Within our own race, it is believed that once you find your greatest excitement, that this no longer becomes only your greatest excitement, but also becomes your responsibility. It becomes a sense of duty within you. This is why when I connect outwardly to all entities, I feel very proud of this. I feel that I have done my job to the greatest capability to help all that is. So it is a sense of not only the highest excitement, but also because I feel that it is my responsibility to live in the highest excitement. Oh, I see. That's, that's actually very fantastic. I'm definitely going to use this and apply this. Yes! So you find your your highest excitement, you know what it is. You not only see it, maybe... Because some people, like, understand that some people, like... Because of situations they got themselves into, they might, they might, they may not be able to, or they may not be able to find a way to not be bothered too. Which I believe is my case to really use the highest excitement and apply it, and you could even make money out of it, live by it, since we have the, this money and financial system on earth. So you really find your highest excitement and make it your responsibility, not necessarily in a financial way. Just you feel it's your duty. I think this is very good. Yeah. Yes. Also, when you live in this excitement, if you completely embrace this excitement and put 100% of your own self into this excitement, you will be able to manifest all other excitements. Yes, thank you. Yes! Um, there is time approximately for one to two last questions. So if you have ones that are more important than others, to please place them at the front of the line. Okay, um, one question is, um, if one, because I don't think that every being is of a loving nature, like, e.g., like, some beings, like, at the core, they're, like, they would prefer, like, you said about, um, about the Alpha Dra, the Alpha Draconians, the Malevolent ones, like, they do not want to go to the seventh density or move high because they enjoy, they, they probably enjoy the, high, the, the hierarchical system and, the domination and all the emotions and the way of living and they like it like that so like kind of maybe if i can put this way at the core they're like this even if we're at the core we are not like this should we all strive to be loving in philosophy and love one another if this makes sense to change one's personality to loving and if your current personality is not that if you know what i mean if your current personality does not resonate with being kind to others and being excited in the ideal or aspects of love, then live truly by what you truly are. If you are not truly able to connect to a loving experience, to a happy experience, or to happiness by finding love is the better way to place these wordings, then live within your highest excitement. If it is your highest excitement to dominate others, if it is your highest excitement to be rude to others, then live in this excitement. It is truly being aligned with what you truly are that finds the purpose of your existence upon this planet. Yes, this is, I understand this is probably very controversial because if you to say to someone, do not live like this, it really doesn't make any sense. Instead, it just reinforces the idea probably of doing this. But yeah, I understand. Yes. If you look at the entity that you know to be Adolf Hitler, this entity truly lived in his excitement. And he was able to be a catalyst of great change in your existence. His purpose in life was fully lived to. Yes, yes, yeah, I understand. Yes! Um, this is a time to disconnect, so if there is any last idea that you wish to express, or any last question that you wish to ask, now would be the time for this. Um, I only wish to express them. Thank you for helping me and having this session with me. Thank you for assisting others by putting out your information in a selfless manner, making this your responsibility. And I just hope, I know your work will spread your... Oh yeah, I forgot to mention this, your work and your popularity and um, what's the, uh, um, your, your knowledge about others is spread like before it was not known to many people but now it's spreading very, very much and it's coming with the channelers that have been around for a very, very long time. Yes!
success in this makes the host very excited. This is his highest excitement. My highest excitement is to speak to anyone who wishes to speak to me. And the host's highest excitement is to have as many people have the opportunity to listen to the information that has changed its existence. So both of us are living our highest excitements through this opportunity and idea. Wow, thank you. Yes. And thank you as well. I wish to express to you my own great excitement in all the communications that we have had and wish to express to you that your energy has grown exponentially of the previous time that we have spoken and this brings a great sense of pride from the host to know that he was able to assist you along your journey in growth of loving others. And with this idea being expressed, I will leave you this morning in love and in light, and we will speak to each other or experience each other again very soon. Thank you, and goodbye. Thank Good you. night. <laughs>